Hi, I'm Kay Conley, and I am a member of the Proactive Health Informatics Group in the Department of Informatics. And um, our group is a little different than traditional medical informatics, where they focus on developing uh, technologies for clinicians in the cl clinical setting. We focus on developing technologies for everyday people out in their everyday lives to better understand, manage, and improve their health. Because outside of the clinical setting is where 99% of your health behaviors occur. One thing that our group is particularly focused on is working with uh, uh, marginalized populations that often experience health disparities. So we work with uh, people that may be low income, maybe they have low education levels, so they have literacy issues, maybe they have a stigmatized condition such as HIV, and in this case what I'll talk about today is people who live in rural America who face some very particular challenges that aren't always considered when we're designing technologies. So what are some of those challenges? Um, I'm just going to review a few of them very briefly. Um, a big one is transportation. They don't live in urban centers where they have public transportation, and if they're low income, they may have uh, uh, barriers with actually having reliable transportation. And this can impact everything from getting to a health center, but also doing things like getting to a grocery store for healthy foods. Um, another issue that they experience as a community is migration outside of the urban centers. So the younger people, in order to find jobs, are often leaving. And so you have these communities that are shrinking um, and often aging as well because the younger people aren't sticking around. Another common problem is access locally to health care. So maybe a community has a nurse practitioner, if they're lucky. They might not have a doctor at all. And they certainly don't have access to specialists where um, if they have a condition such as cancer or HIV, where they need more intense care. But you say we're in informatics, so we have telehealth. That's the solution. Except for the fact that broadband actually does not reach a large uh, percentage of our geography in the states. So on the right-hand side, you have Indiana blown up. And you can see all of these little white spaces around southern Indiana. So that's around Bloomington, um, where uh, they simply don't have broadband. So they don't have that ability to have that really good telehealth where they can kind of uh, Skype in experts to um, to, to help uh, treat various conditions. So, talked about a lot of problems. There are others that rural, uh, rural uh, communities experience. And what this does is it creates a perfect storm for health disparities. And we see this a lot with these populations. They have worse health outcomes. They have higher uh, mortality rates. Um, and uh, we want to try to, to, to help that. Um, so I've painted kind of a grim picture. Luckily, these communities also have resources. If you go into the community and you maybe apply some ethnographic methods to really understand how are they managing now and what resources do they have access that you can tap into, you'll find that there are a lot of opportunities as well. So just to give you a really quick example of what I mean by that, I've been working with older adults for many years, over a decade, on how we can help them stay in their homes for as long as possible. And one of the things that we found out is a primary motivator for moving someone to assisted living is that the family members are worried about their parents. Um, and so we designed a lot of technologies that allow family members to easily check in on their, their, their old, the older adult in their family or their parent um, in, in a very unobtrusive way that the older adult could accept and it would reassure family members on a daily basis that, yeah, my mom's okay. So what you see on the left is just a presence kind of um, technology. We embedded it in a clock so it's not hugely technical. And it just allowed you to glance at the clock and say, yeah, mom's up for the day, she's okay. Or mom's not as active as she normally is, so maybe I need to give her a call. When we went into the rural areas, unfortunately, this didn't translate. A lot of those younger people had moved out of the community, so the older adults weren't relying on their immediate family members for that kind of care. And so instead what we found is they were actually relying on their peers. There were a lot of other older adults in that community that they could work with and they were checking in on each other anyway, but it was difficult because they were rural, they weren't next door neighbors. And so what we ended up doing was designing these technologies that connected a social network of older adults together. In this case, it looks like a little tree, it has photos hanging down, and everyone on the peer network had this, and you could simply press a button to check in for the day, say that you were okay, and you could quickly glance at your tree and check and make sure everyone in your network was okay. And if not, you could pick up the phone and give them a call. We capitalized on that peer network for multiple technologies. We, saw, we helped solve the transportation problem. So a lot of times these older adults, either they didn't have a car or they didn't have the gas money or maybe not the energy to actually drive to Indianapolis to go to a clinic. 
So we made, again, a very non-technical looking calendar that had magnets that would allow people to pool together their resources to make the trips to urban centers that they needed. So I just want to final, say a final word that we're not the only people on campus doing this. Um, the provost has recently launched a center for rural engagement looking at more than just health, and I encourage you to go there as well.